Valley Grace Ridge, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit every single week. Lady Ada helps you find the things you're looking for on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what you looking for uh, this week? Temperature sensors. So one of the you know early sensors slash boards that we stocked was this um, MLX 9614. And this is a cool sensor. It's a through hole, breadboard friendly, infrared temperature sensor. And what it does is it measures the infrared light bounced off of an object and it uses that to calculate the temperature and it's calibrated. So it can give you like a really good approximation of um, the temperature within a couple degrees. The downside is it's through hole. I mean, it's a, it's a pro and a con, right? The pro is like, oh, like it's great for beginners. They just plug it into a breadboard. They wire up SDA and SEL to their Arduino and like you're good to go. You can even like you know, connect little wires on. <coughs> as long as you have pull-up resistors, um, either externally or on your board, you're, you're good to go. But the problem is, is that, and you know, I think we can ship it with two resistors. The, the problem is, is that I wanted something that was very plug and play. Like if, you know, we have STEM QT, um, we have a lot of sensors and boards that, um, you know, I can maybe I'll quickly, like this actually, this is a, a thermal sensor that has STEM QT on it. Um, it's just plug and play. It's so easy to connect and you don't have to worry about getting pins wrong and the voltages and the level shifting is handled for you. So this is another sensor. This one's much more expensive. This is 75 compared to like $15. This one is a 24 by 32 camera. So it actually kind of gives you um, a full, um, like a matrix grid. So you can actually look at um, like hands and devices and like environments and you can pinpoint where the temperatures are, um, which is like super neat. And we have you know, a couple projects like this one is kind of a cool demo, you know, you can do uh, overlays and stuff as well. We'll do a couple of projects with that coming up. But what we wanted was something inexpensive. I mean, this is a great sensor, but it is $75, single point, just one measurement. Um, and without, without having this through hole um, complexity, I wanted something surface mount. So let's go to DigiKey and um, we can look for, and, and oh, so I wanted to mention one more thing. We used to carry a sensor that did this. It was called the TMP006 and 007. In fact, this was very early in the product number 1295, very early in our existence. Um, and then they discontinued the 12006 and came out the 12007, uh, sorry, temp 007. We had this one for a very long time. Great little sensor, um, worked fairly well. Um, you just have to kind of like, you know, know know what you're getting out of it. Um, but it was annoying PGA and then they discontinued it. Um, why, you know, I don't know. It's kind of rare for TI to discontinue stuff, but they did. So what I want to do is basically find <coughs> an alternative to the TMP 007. <coughs> Another thing that was nice about this, it was, it was fairly inexpensive, which could be also why they stopped making it. They put, maybe they were, you know, the yield didn't, um, a lot for the price. So obsolete, but let's find another, um, temperature sensor. So let's go to temperature analog and digital output. And there's a lot available. And most of these are local temperature sensors, right? They'll tell you the temperature at the chip itself, which is quite handy. That's not what we want, but first let's start with just active. So you just filter out what's not available and what's available. So let's select those. They only want something I can get. And then, so for types, there is, you know, if they don't mention it, it's local. It means it's at the, at the chip itself. So what we want is the infrared. When it says local, but not infrared, I've noticed it's usually a thermocouple or um, a thermistor. So it's like you can connect an external item to measure temperature, but it's not, again, it's, that item still has to touch the sensor, which we don't want. We want IR, which is um, fully, like you just point it at the thing. And as long as it's within like six inches, you'll get um, the temperature reading. So I got infrared, digital infrared and analog infrared. I don't know if I'd get the analog, you know, and use it, but we'll see if it's like very inexpensive. I'll just put ADC on there and get the digital output up. Um, so that really cuts down the number of items. So let's go see what we got. So as expected, we've got those MLXs. This is the chip that I just showed you guys. And they do have like a lot of varieties. They, you know, this, this really worked out for them. They have like ones that are very narrow, ones that are, um, ones that are um, wideband, like Amphenol makes some of these. Some of these, oh, the analog ones, I will warn you, a lot of these are 
inexpensive. So this one is like, you know, only a couple dollars. The reason is, is that you have to convert, it gives you a resistance and then you have to convert it. And one of the things that is um, an issue is that the, the local temperature will affect the resistance as well. And so you have to do a lot of calibration to figure out like what is the local temperature and then adjust that to figure out what the remote temperature is and then like do this math and calculation. So these, you know, you'll see these Thermopile IR analog sensors in low cost products where they have, where it's like, we're making a million of these remote forehead temperature sensors. And so um, it's worth it to save six bucks per sensor, five dollars per sensor. <coughs> and then we do a calibration procedure in the factory. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I don't expect my customers to do that. So we're not gonna go with those instead. Um, Let's um, let's get rid of the analog and just do digital infrared. So we get rid of just those sensors. And then um, another thing is some of these are through hole and some of these are surface mount. We want only the surface mount ones because that was the whole deal is I want something that was pick and placeable. Um, although we could, you know, sort by price. Oh, one thing that's kind of neat that's new is you can um, drag the, um, so it's like, if you really care about sensing temperature the most and you're like, oh no, it's like, this is so long. You can drag over the thing that's most important for you. Um, so let's do price by quantity, about 250 pieces and just see, you have know, a through hole one popped at the top. Um, this one is, you know, it's like a dollar 50 less. I'm just gonna look at this real fast. This is calibrated outputs. That's kind of nice. And it's I squared C. So I'm probably not going to use this one because again, it's, it is through hole and that does add a lot of um, effort for functionality. Also, I want to make sure what is the voltage? Do you need five volts or can it run on three volts? Okay, I got one from two to three volts. This is actually cool. This is actually a really nice chip. I think this is kind of Amphenol's um, uh, response to the MLX series. Um, it's, you know, it's a much less expensive chip, but it's not significantly less than these enough. I think like the dollar 50 isn't quite enough to justify, um, that I'd have to hand solder and then clip the leads. Cause that adds, that adds quite a bit of labor cost. Also I'm probably gonna end up buying more than 250. So let's, uh, given that let's get rid of the through hole. Uh, Okay, chassis, panel mount, surface mount. So just select surface mount. And a couple options. We've got um, this TPIS series from Excelsius. This AMG for Panasonic, we actually use this. It's an 8x8 sensor. So it's, a, it's more expensive. It's on the $20 range because it's got, again, you know, a uh, 64 point grid of sensors. Very cool. We already have a breakout. But the one that um, I liked, and again, this is, you know, also ended up on IMPI because it's a, you know, it was a featured product, is the MLX 9320. And what's nice about it is it's surface mount and um, pretty small, and it can run on 3.3 volts, which is great. And they have a cool um, medical um, calibrated version, which is a little bit more expensive. But if you look at the calibration, and it's pre-calibrated, which is again also like really nice because that's the, you know, if you have the setup, it's it's easy and inexpensive. But if you don't, it's a total pain to do. If we go to the calibration, yeah. So the standard calibration has ranged from negative twenty to two hundred object temperature centigrade, which is a good a good nice range. Um, and it can do you know it, it gets you you know as you get to hot or very cold. Uh, it, it, it changes, but as long as you're around room temperature, it's about one to three degrees off accuracy. But the medical, what's really nice is that if you're measuring um, mammals or other living things or plants, it gets very, very precise, much better than one degree C at the ambient temperature about room temperature and ambient temperature also, and uh, device temperature also about room temperature. So like basically things that are like meat, vegetable, um, not boiling hot, not freezing cold, you're gonna get really good um, precision. So I might make two versions, one 
that's a less expensive that's like, okay, you don't, you don't need more than plus or minus one degree C and one that's the medical temperature. So this is my, this is my choice for the great search. So I'm going to make that break out and see how it goes. Not is the great search.